Hello. So today's video is on our childhood wounds and also our partner's childhood wounds and how these unhealed aspects that we all carry within us can actually trigger our partner and ourselves and create a lot of miscommunication. And today I will give tips on how you can learn to understand your partner's childhood wounds and understand your wounds so you can come together into a place of understanding and compassion so you can move forward with more self-awareness together which actually creates a stronger foundation for your relationship so if you are new here my name is tess and i help my clients break through limiting beliefs and the illusions that keep them stuck and small so they can step into their power and stop believing in this powerlessness that drives them within their lives. When we can break through the belief systems that we create, we can create a new reality and see ourselves with new eyes and also the world with new eyes. I'm currently offering discovery sessions and you can book a session with me and the link is in the description below. So first off, I want to talk about trauma and wounds before we dive into the relationship stuff. So trauma means wound and trauma is not the actual event that happened to you or that you were a part of or experienced. It's what you made that event mean about yourself. Usually these come in the forms of limiting beliefs. Like, I don't matter, I'm not important, I'm a burden, I'm unlovable, I'm unworthy, or even to as far as I am worthless. So these belief systems are the actual pain that we carry forward with us into adulthood. And a lot of these belief systems were actually created in your childhood. And because the child doesn't know how to deal with this, they believe in these things and bring them into adulthood. And then these parts will actually drive us through our life, choosing the partners that we choose, choosing the friendships that we want in our life. And it also attracts partners into our life. And this will take us into the next part. So if we have unhealed wounds within, whatever that wound is, we will tend to attract a partner that has similar wounds that will trigger our wounds when we're in this relationship. And this is designed in this way for us to understand ourselves on a deeper level. A lot of our relationships are growth relationships and a mirror for us to see ourselves on a deeper level. It is through our relationships that we can really start to understand ourselves and what those deep wounds are. So we can look at our relationships as a tool and a teacher for us to heal. If we have eyes willing to see and we're ready to do the work, and it makes it a lot easier as well when both people in the relationship are wanting to become more self-aware and wanting to see their wounds and work together through this because it is inevitable that when you are in a relationship, you are going to trigger each other's wounds. So for example, if we carry the wound of betrayal, we are in a way transmitting that to the world if we haven't healed that. And we are transmitters with this energy that goes out, this frequency of betrayal, which also pulls others in that in a way can bring that up within you. So you may attract a partner that puts you through something like betrayal. You may attract partners over and over that you feel betray you. And so that is because this unhealed wound of betrayal is like a transmitter or magnet that actually pulls in those experiences. And this can sound daunting or disheartening, but when we pull those uh, people in or those experiences in that are painful, we have a choice and a chance and an opportunity to heal those spaces if we choose to go through it consciously. Instead of closing our eyes and going through it in a space of suffering where we just keep repeating those cycles and calling the same people in we have the opportunity to break that cycle and heal. So the next partner that we attract will be on a different frequency and you won't be playing out those same scenarios and cycles. So usually when two people are in a relationship and they have a disagreement and it gets heated and it turns into conflict, 
both people are usually actually reverting and turning back into their child. It is the activation and trigger of the emotions that is activating this old wound. Yes, the present moment may be triggering you and what the other person is speaking or communicating, but if that wound was not there, you wouldn't be identified with what the other person is seeing and it wouldn't be hitting you so deep. So it actually comes from a past wound. And same goes for your partner. So what you want to do is when you are in conflict with your partner, you want to understand that when two people are getting activated, they're both reverting back into their inner child, the wounded child. That's when things are said that maybe are not meant. That's when you can see different sides to each other that maybe aren't the best uh, perspective to see. But it's really important to have compassion for each other in that recognizing that you are activating each other's wounds. So when you are in it and you are both in your child or maybe just one person is in their child, it's not always the greatest place to try to come to resolve when you're in that because you are literally in the mind of a child. You may have reverted back to a five-year-old child. So it's really important to learn together when you need to say, okay, stop. We need to stop talking about this and take a break. And we both need to self-soothe on our own, on our own. Like maybe one person goes to another room or maybe you can just sit together in, in quietude and just breathe together and even just speak. Okay. We are both in our child right now, in our wounded child. Let's just take a break. And when you're ready, we can talk this through. So a lot of times, for example, when I go into my wounded child, I go into disconnection and separation. I completely separate from the other person and I usually drop into shame. It's my go-to dropping into shame. And so then I can't come from a logical space to resolve anything in that moment because I become defensive. So there's this defense. I need to defend myself. And so when I come into the space of I need to defend myself, anything that I'm going to say is going to be in a defensive way and it's probably not going to make the situation any better. The next step that you want to do is when you're both in a space of calmness and you feel like you've settled down, really get clear on what it is that's going on within you. Where is this wound coming from? What is the perception of this wound? Let's say your partner says something to you and portrays you in a certain light, but that's not how you feel the situation went or you are. And so what is that perception? Oh, I feel misunderstood. This makes me feel sad or this makes me feel angry. When in my life have I felt misunderstood before? Is this a deep wound of me feeling misunderstood? And because my partner seems to be misunderstanding me, I'm becoming wildly activated and I just want to defend myself because I feel like I'm so misunderstood. And really, it has nothing to do with my partner, but I need to, to deal with this wound. And maybe your partner is misunderstanding you. So you want to get clear on what that is and come from a calm nature and explain that. I feel misunderstood and it makes me sad or it makes me angry and I feel like I have to defend myself. May I explain where I'm coming from? And when you speak with your partner, you want to give each other space and time to speak not interrupting the other person. So you can even think like you have a talking stick, an invisible talking stick. When it's your turn to talk, you speak until you're finished. And when you've completed, then you allow your partner to speak and where they are coming from and you don't interrupt them and you don't defend yourself. Even if you want to, and there's that part in you where you, you want to defend, you want to defend, just pay attention to what's happening in your body Breathe through it while actively listening to them, not thinking about how you want to defend yourself. Really listen to them and where they're coming from and understand that sometimes you have conflicting belief systems and conflicting ideas about what the situation is. And again, that's because of these deep wounds within. When you can understand each other's wounds and how you tick and what your default coping mechanism or survival mechanism is within each other, then you can start to work with each other on a deeper level, which brings in so much compassion and honesty 
you're really getting honest with each other and learning each other instead of shutting down and not trying to understand the other person and just feeling, feeling like you need to defend yourself or that you are right in the situation. Another really big tip is to always be willing to be wrong. Usually in conflict, right, we feel like we are right and the other is wrong. But because of these childhood wounds, things can get really messy and mixed up. And a lot of times no one is right, no one is wrong. These are just deep wounds that are asking to be healed. Of course, if there is any form of emotional or physical or psychological abuse that is happening, then I don't condone that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about conscious communication in a conflict so you can resolve the situation. If you are in a relationship that is abusive, then I would say get out of that relationship if you can without trying to resolve that because when there's abuse involved, there's usually usually deeper patterns and if that person is not willing to look at that or see that and is harming you, you need to leave that situation. This practice in a relationship takes getting really real with each other and being really honest and vulnerable. It's scary. It's not easy. It can be nerve wracking. I'm not going to say that it's easy, but the rewards that come from it is deep connection. When you have these conflicts, which happens in relationships, you can come through it with deep clarity of each other. And then the next time conflict comes up, you are that much better equipped to deal with the situation. And each time these conflicts come up or these disagreements come up, you are getting stronger together in it. You're in it together instead of being against each other. This creates a deep union with the person that you are with. And it creates more self-awareness within your relationship and personally within your own journey. Most relationships fail because of the miscommunication and lack of communication and not being honest with each other in a compassionate way. If we can change our communication styles with our partners and really make that a priority in our relationships, then our relationships will thrive. That doesn't mean that they won't go through hard times because all relationships go through hard times. Relationships are not easy and they take work. But if you are both on the same page in that way, your relationship will thrive if you continuously seek or put attention towards better communication. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and share with your friends. My name is Tess. Thanks for watching.